Privates in general to victory by taking out the opposing side. Launch your cannon to take out your opponent's army. Charge closer to the wall to get a better line of sight. And even capture your opposing army soldiers. Pow! The Cannon Game by Milton and Bradley. Welcome to Tabletop Island. I'm Bernardo, your host. And today we're going to be taking a look at the vintage board game. Pow! The Cannon Game. This is a really weird one by uh, Milton and Bradley. It's really interesting. So let's first take a look at the box. This is one of the only times here that I've seen this. This game came out in 1964. And with the game board itself, while it has such great artwork on it, you can see here it says four boys. That's the first thing I noticed that I was like, that's pretty interesting. But then as you keep looking along, it says ages five to 12. This is the only time I've ever seen it say an end age range for a board game let alone a vintage board game even for Milton and Bradley it says blank to blank so 12 and up or whatever and up or blank to adult for a lot of vintage games even now the only company I see do that's Haba from whatever to 99 obviously that's comical but age range dead end uh kind of caps for the age i thought was rather surprising if you know any other board games that have that definitely let me know i'd be interested in taking a look at that i've kind of looked through most of my collection and i didn't see that there so it's definitely something that wasn't common now the components on the table look fine it isn't completely spectacular a lot of its cardboard like the castle and the standees i would prefer miniatures obviously like a lot of us but it's fine it does come with a really nicely well-made plastic cannon and it does have a spinner for each player i'll be honest with you the spinner's metal and it's rather sharp so i'm pretty surprised they did this i feel like it's pretty dangerous especially for a kid's game uh, especially if you're starting the age range at five so that was something to consider i'm sure they probably felt pretty strongly about that now no one will probably do this again but uh, metal definitely a bit dangerous here on the game um, but the game itself does have very simplistic artwork nothing too too spectacular but it does still look quite nice and the symmetry and the color design is still rather pretty to look at now the gameplay itself you have your armies they're set up in the back row on the black diamonds with the white circle in the middle then you have your general on the black diamond with the yellow circle and your goal is to use the spinner. You each have your own spinner and your own cannon. And you're spinning to take an action. So whether it's um, shoot a fire where you take the cannon, put the little cannonball in and shoot it the number of times on the spinner, one to three. Or you can have a charge spot where you kind of move your army forward one row. Again, the most that can possible. Obviously, if there's nowhere to move forward, it skips your turn. And then you also have retreat, which does the opposite and moves you backwards. And then finally, the capturing of the soldiers where you can reach over and take one of your opponent's soldiers and capture it. Now, here's where this little interesting negotiation aspect happens too. So your end goal of the game is to take out their whole army. Now, what happens is if you hit your general, then instead of the general being removed, he's put back to where he was and you remove three privates. If they hit your general and you ha don't have three privates, then you lose your opponent wins the game. Now, if you end up hitting a private, you slowly remove them. And again, the last player standing wins. And it goes back and forth. And again, with stealing the um, kind of their soldiers and capturing them, you can also negotiate to get some of yours back. So let's say I captured one of theirs and they captured one of mine. If we can both agree to give each other our captured soldiers back, we can place them on a starting end of the board and begin the game or continue the game, I should state. But that's such a fun aspect. I love the idea of being able to decide how badly you need your army back, especially if you know you only have two privates and one general and you can't afford them to hit your general because he's a little too close to your privates huh that sounded weird hmm but that's honestly the entire game there it's very simple it just has a bunch of back and forth and cannon shooting action i did very much like the black cannon game that i reviewed the week prior a little bit more but this is another cannon game that is a bit older than this game it's such a neat idea being able to shoot a cannon there's one other cannon game i'm still out looking for um hopefully i'll be able to get that out and reviewed rather soon my box is actually falling apart that's kind of how old this game is i have a bunch of games even older than this but they're not even falling apart nearly as much as this game i guess maybe how they stored it they should have really taken care of these 
I guess a lot of people just didn't know. What do you guys think of this game? If you find a good deal again, I do recommend taking a look at it. I got this game, I would say about $10. I didn't pay a lot for it, but I thought it was really interesting and I really wanted to get it to the table. It is a two player game and I typically don't go for two player games, which is why Black Cannon I liked a little bit more. It is a four player game. But that's honestly all I have for you guys today. If you are interested in notifications, there is a bell up there somewhere. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I do appreciate any feedback. I'm trying to make these videos more and more outrageous. And with your guys' help, I have been doing so. Monday, regular board game reviews. Wednesday, weekly update slash talks. And then on Friday is my vintage board game reviews. That is all I have for you guys today. I'll see you guys next time.